Even Brightly. Crisp and Even Brightly by Alec Rowe, with Timothy West as Good King Wenceslas and James Holland as Mark, his page. Bloody Nora. We'll be stuck on duty over Christmas. I know over time. Yeah, what's that radical tongue of yours, Sigmund lad? That wouldn't hurt you, though, would it? To say it's right. Kings don't get to be kings by seeing poor proles like us right. Now who's being radical? It's not radical. A subversive. Oh, what's the point? Palaces have got to be guarded. Even over Christmas. By it, though, what to it's chilly. All right, well, look at this morning snowfall, deep. No, oh, deep and crisp, what with this frost. Must be what, eh? Twenty below? Yeah, cruel frost, this. It's wind as gets me. It scoured that loose snow, dead even. Oh, my lad, brightly shines the moon. True, could be worse. Hey, up. Who's that? Beggar, is it? Poor man. Some poor beggar. What's he doing? Gathering winter fuel, do you think? Don't be ridiculous. I'd have to dark in the middle of Prague gathering wood when there's been heavy snowfall and the frost caked everything solid anyway. Ah, oh, true, what a stupid. Sorry. Uh, we'll keep an eye on him. Hi, Ab, look who's here. Hello. Oh, hello, young Mark. You slipped out for a breath of fresh air, You've then? come to the right place, son. <laughs> I thought you might be hungry. You know, sentry duty and that. So I bought you some cheese. Oh, you're a good lad. Sorry about the weevils. Well, you know us. See no weevil, you no weevil, eat no weevil. <laughs> Stupid bullock. What's that out there in the square? It's a poor man. We'd best have him over and question him. Hey, you. Yes. Yeah, and over here, if you please. Why aren't you up it warm with himself? He's got a boring security briefing oh. with Lady Ludmilla and the spy. Bloody Nora. Wenceslas, are you listening? Yes. Are you sure? Yes, yes, yes. Don't use that tone with me. Sorry. I am your grandmama as well as head of Bohemian security. True. Continue, spy. Uh, the Slavnik plot decidedly deepens. Fine. Your Majesty must take every precaution. Assassination attempts cannot be ruled out. Wonderful. And you can no longer rely on public support. Your popularity is slipping. Tremendous. A random poll in Prague insists 90% of the city consider you a bad king. And your ratings in the countryside are worse. Look, riveting though your merry tidings are, could they come to some rough sort of end? It is the second day of Christmas, and I consider myself to be on holiday. Nonsense. Kings of Bohemia never take holidays. Terrific. What? Wenceslas? Where are you going? To the window, Grandmama. Only to open it for fresh air, not to leap. Sorry. So, Wenceslas? Think about a public relations exercise of some sort? Can't we simply look on the bright side? Ten percent of Prague thinks I'm a good king. You don't object, by the way, if I look out over my kingdom before the ravening Slavniks cancel the dynasty. You are so obstinate. Yes. And thick. Thank you so much, Grandmother. I wonder where I get it from. You are quite sure you're quite simply nothing more than a poor man. Quite sure. Only your voice. The effects of poverty. Not to mention your uh, shape. True. I am in poor shape. No, not poor. I wouldn't say that exactly. Just wrong. The effects of malnutrition. And you're collecting firewood? I am. What did I tell you? Yeah, right, listen, mate. This is a city. Yes, this is the palace and it's after nightfall. Everything's iced up and covered with snow. Yeah, particularly the odd bit of kindling. That will be why I have gathered none. I shall persevere. You're balmy. Correct. This is the result of genetic deficiency and a lifetime of hard work. Where do you live? The foot of the mountain, young sir. Which mountain? Any of you know St. Agnes Fountain? No. 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 The mountain near that. How far would that be, then? A good league. You must follow along the forest fence. Which forest? The one on the side of the mountain by the fountain of St Agnes. I don't get any of this. Ah, oh, well, and good luck to you. Balmy you may be, but you're not stuck out here in the wind guarding the royal palace over Christmas. <laughs> Have some cheese. Thank you, no. Such rich diet would overwhelm my simple digestion. On your way, then. Yeah, good luck with the firewood. Page! Page! Hi up, young Mark. Look out. Where is he? Up at the window there. Can you hear me, Page? Are you deaf? Sire! Come up here, Paige, at once. See you, Sigmund. See you, Otto. Ah, see you, Mark. Man. Look after yourself now. Funny about that poor man, wasn't it? How he lives right next to the forest, yet walks three miles into a city to find wood. Bye. Bloody Nora. Hmm. Oh, what's it matter? 
It's Christmas and the poor man's on his way. Out of sight, out of mind. Oh, dear, oh, dear, it's cold. Boxing Day, how I hate it. Feast of Stephen, my lad. Stephen who? Saint Stephen and First Christian Martyr. Get away. Done to violent and distressful death by the angry and vengeful mob. Stone me. You agree, Wenceslas? If you say so. I say so, the spy says so, the whole of Bohemia says so. Quite a simple act would suffice, would it? Uh, the simpler, the better. Something warm, sentimental and overwhelmingly useless, like a party political broadcast? Precisely, sir. All right, leave it with me. Good night, both of you. When do I have the pleasure of your next departmental briefing? My Ministry of Spies and Security requires an audience in one week's time. If the Slavniks haven't got you by then. Thank you and good night. Their agents are everywhere. Then get out and counter some. Good night. Good night, Wenceslas. <laughs> oh. Sorry, lady. Sorry, spy. Watch your manners. You're here only on probation. Yes, lady. And next time, wait till you're called in, right? Yes, spy. Sorry, spy. How do you know I'm a spy? Everybody knows you're a spy. Go on. Come here. Ow! What was that for? Because you're a page and I'm a king. Come over to the window and stand by me. Look out there, boy. Over there. See? That peasant bobbing up and down, scrabbling at the ground with a sack on his back. Yes, sir. Please, sir. He's getting wood. Who is he and where's he from? Three miles away, sir. At the foot of the mountain, near St Agnes Fountain. St Agnes what? Fountain. He's just a poor man, sir. He's a peasant. I can tell a poor man from a peasant. What sort of a place has he got out there, then, underneath this mountain? I don't understand, sir. What does he live in? He's dwelling. Yes, of course he's dwelling. I don't know. I mean, I don't expect it's privately owned or a penthouse suite. How exactly did you mean, sir? Hovel, hut, mobile home... All the world hates a smart ass, particularly at Christmas. What time are they laying dinner for us tonight? For us, sir? The Slavniks are apparently gathering to finish me off, so I'll be needing you to taste the food for poison. Gosh, sir. Thank you, sir. Dinner's 8 for 8.30, sir. Right. I'll tell you what to do. I've decided on an entirely spontaneous gesture of great generosity. We are going to deliver to that peasant's very dwelling a food parcel. Meat. Drink, even the wood to cook the meat with and keep the place warm while we're there. We shall stand by and bask in his grateful gibberings, after which we shall take our earliest possible leave and return to our own dinner in the banqueting hall. Golly! So get out your notebook, write this down, and take it to the crone in the kitchens. He wants what? Flesh wine pine logs. Can't he wait for a bit? He's only just had tea. Please, Crone, it's not for him, it's for a poor man. What you make of that, Vlad? If this is what our good King Wenceslas wishes, senile one, it is our duty and pleasure to obey, I suppose. Crepe. I've got to get it all packed up quickly. What's your name, child? Please, sir, Mark, sir. I'm page on duty, sir. So, sir, Mark, sir, page on duty, sir. What flesh and how much? I was to leave that to you and the Crone, sir. It sounds peculiarly unlike our good King Wenceslas to provide for the poor like this. What time's this poor man coming to collect it? Oh, no, it's to be delivered. Not by the kitchen staff, it's not. I should say not. No, sir. Right, then. What flesh and how much? Vladdy, get your abacus out. You're the royal provisioner and calculator. Very well. So he... Just a minute. Now... If my poor man... The king called him a peasant. Aha. Average Bohemian Catholic farm worker. Use the nationally favoured statistical formula of X plus Y plus XY squared times seven. Good, yes? Crone, what was last year's infant mortality rate? Oh, I don't know. This is supposed to be the season of jollity and goodwill. Don't ask me. Ah, yes. We are catering for five adults, five children. What meat, Sonny? Flesh, he specified, Sir Mark, sir. Yes. Not poultry or fish. Oh, I've got a nice rabbit. I could do a duck or a goose. A king should be generous, even this one. Venison, Crone. Oh, I don't know. What happens if he doesn't like venison? Then he can stuff it. Oh, if he's going to stuff it, better send a goose. Venison. Now, wine. Red, of course. 
bohemian white is more palatable, but wasted on a peasant. Let them drink plonk. The castle house wine will do. Chateau Wenceslas, lots of body, but little else. Flesh and wine down, logs to go. Pine logs, why pine? Does this ten-pound haunch of venison have to be cooked by the heat of these logs? I can't eat it raw. Nothing would astonish me about rural bohemia. How long to cook it? Three and a half hours, say four. Wonderful, isn't he, dear? Everybody ought to know how to use a calculator. Twelve feet of pine at nine inches diameter. I'll get it all carried up here. And where, Sir Mark, sir, has all this to be collected? Look, satire and irony I can stand. I quite enjoy metathesis and light OTs. But what bores me pubertal is witless turgidity, all right? Right. Sorry. Thank you. The answer to your question is by the secret door in the south wall. Come along, come along. Is this going to take all night? We've got to get it there, watch it being devoured, and come all the way back before getting a single bite ourselves. And I'm already peckish. Load up, boy. On what, sir? On you. You can carry a few bottles of wine, can't you? What's your age? Ten, sir. And here's a ten-pound joint of venison. A big, strong ten-year-old lad like you... Uh, Here come the lumberjacks, hauling up the logs. Healthy, great young man that you are. You want me to carry all that? Who else? Who else is coming? Nobody else is coming. But who's going to navigate? You are. It's not fair. I'm a king. It doesn't have to be fair. You surely don't expect me to carry it for you. So... Wine in half-litre bottles, suspended on a cord, three each side for balance. Pine logs tied each to each and fastened to a frame, the frame firmly strapped upon the back. Oh. Now, if the crone sees fit to divide the meat, the page may carry a five-pound joint beneath each arm. No, pity to spoil a good-looking haunch like that. Then the poor child Marksa will have to cradle it before him in his arms against his chest and remember to lean back as much as possible. What about the lantern? I suppose I'm supposed to carry that. Not at all, sir. I assume your page will be wearing headwear of some description. Of course he will. What sort of heartless monster do you take me for? Then let the lantern be fixed thereon and the problem is solved. Bloody Nora. He'll be able to walk, will he? Oh, yes, more or less. If he tries very hard, probably. Good. I'll go and put on something warm. Finish getting the page loaded, and I'll meet him he knows where in ten minutes. Stand up, boy. You're buckling. Yeah. You hold on to that meat hook over your head. That's right. That's better. How far is this peasant's hovel? It's a good league, hence. An unladen adult average is four miles an hour on even ground in good condition. Oh, what about a little boy carrying six bottles, ten pounds of dead weight flesh and fourteen foot of nine-inch pine? <laughs> You're going to look like a walking wood pile with a candle on top, boy. I think walking may actually be pitching it a bit high, Crone. <laughs> <laughs> Look! We're... It's a walking wood pile with a candle on top. You think I'm duffed? No. No, it was. It, it sort of swayed out of the shadows by the south wall and staggered round the corner. You're cracking up. Yeah. Must be the cold. Oh, here comes the snow. And the wind... Is this the best you can do? Yes. What? Yes. We'll be out all night at this rate. I'm doing my best. And most of tomorrow. Tough. What did you say? Nothing. Which way? I'm a king, not a compass. How do I know? I can't navigate. I can hardly stand. All right. Where are we going? Mountain. What? Mountain! Bloody mountain! So, here's the forest ahead. Mountains are up. Brilliant. Behind us is down. Left and right is all level. 
Ahead the path climbs. Onward. Through the forest. Stroll on. Boy, will you keep up? I want to be home by half past eight. Password. And passes into Prussia attention. Come in, spy. Slavnik's rule. Okay. okay. Come to the fire, spy. What is it like out there? Go on, it worsens every minute. Excellent. Your news? The palace is barely guarded. Two sentries only at the main gate. Spy. Is the operation go? Tona, it is. <sighs> I even saw the hateful, rattled tyrant himself roaring from a window for his oppressed and downtrodden minions. But can you lead us to the palace? I can. And conduct us in stealth to his room? I can. Slavnik spies are wonderful. Thank you. And beguiling. Thank you. It is best not to become sentimental. We are the Slavnik Assassination Unit 1. Let us keep our task strictly before us. Prepare. Uh, load up. What is your command? Arm, arm. This is no time for indecision. I think our comrade intends us to take and conceal our weapons. It is so. Sorry. Swords. Check. Check. Daggers. Check. Check. Poison darts and war pipes. Check. Clubs, axes. Check. Check. Crossbows and bows. Check. Check. Funny little red things with spikes in the hole in the middle. Check. Oh. Warm gloves and woolly hats. Check. Check. Good. It is done. And now I shall alter my disguise. You see me here, the poor wood gatherer. You see me now. A fir tree. Astounding. Incredible. Slavnik's rule. Okay. Let us bear our weapons to the palace. <laughs> Oh, Is everybody here? And will someone have that bell silenced? Is everybody here? Quiet! Bit of quiet in my kitchen. I should think so. Thank you, Christ. Lad? Good. Potter and Sigmund spy. Good. Listen. We have a crisis. Crisis? And listen. The king is nowhere to be found, and there is a page missing. Isn't that just typical? What? Always the same. Just when it gets exciting. Just as you get to the best bit of the book. Just when we you get to the We are here to discover where he may have gone and what must be done. Remembering, of course, that security is notoriously lax during the Christmas period and that Slavnik agents are known to be at hand. Speak. We saw him, lady, up at his window. This evening, early on. What were the conditions? Snow lying, lady. Deep snow. Levelled and honed by the wind in the frost. Terrible frost, lady. Cruel. Suspicious circumstances? A poor man, lady, hanging about. Said he was looking for wood. Then the king called down for young Mark. That's his page. Mark the page. That's a nasty habit. Thank you, Crow. Only the boy was down with us, you see, lady. That's right. If you remember, up he came to the room while we were there. After we'd gone, the king ordered him to the window and pointed out this so-called, though now infinitely suspicious, poor man. Oh, no, Peasant, he said he was. Who said? Who said who was? The boy said the king said the poor man was. Certainly, Lady Rudmiller. It was upon the basis that the poor man was a positive peasant that I calculated the relevant provisions. Anyway, the king asked the boy who this poor man or peasant was and where he was from, what sort of house he had. Oh, but how do you know all this? Oh, listen to the keyhole. That's my job. I'm a spy. The page boy. He'd be able to give all this information because he'd heard us question the man. Yeah, he lives just over three miles away. Foot of the forest. You just follow the fence. Along to St. Agnes Fountain. Well, well, anyway. Anyway, flesh, wine and logs were required. Pine logs. They were going to deliver it all and be back in time for dinner. Wait a minute. The walking wood pile. Right. Oh, we saw them leave the palace, lady, just when the blizzard was starting up. So what we have so far is this. Good King Wenceslas looked out on the Feast of Stephen when the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even. Brightly shone the moon that night, though the frost was cruel. When a poor man came in sight gathering winter fuel. Fuel? Fuel. Hither, page, and stand by me, if thou knowst it's telling. Yonder peasant, who is he? Where and what his dwelling? Sire, he lives a good league head. Underneath the mountain. 
hard against the forest fence by St. Agnes Fountain. Where? Bring me flesh and bring me wine. Bring me pine logs hither. Thou and I shall see him dine ere we dine together. Page and monarch, forth they went, forth, forth they went, went together, through the ruined wild wilderness. And the bitter weather, yes, I see. God, yes, yes, yes. spy, uh, yes, after them we shall await further reports. Uh, who was carrying this several hundred way to fatuous goodwill? The boy. As I thought. And who was leading the way? The king. Precisely. They won't have gone far. Away this moment. Does this mean you want dinner held up? Well, since there will be nobody to eat it. Wait, 30, he said. You know what he's like. It's 8.15 now. Go. More than my job's worth to be late. For God's sake, go. I obey, lady. But first, a change of disguise. No more the everyday accoutrements of the palace lackey. Instead... <laughs> Giant Pyrenean mountain dog! <laughs> I don't like that one bit. No, me. Uncanny. Achoo! Oh, what's wrong with you? Uh, long haired animals always make me sneeze. Achoo! Be so very nice if you could all set about your various tasks. Sentries, follow me! You ever felt stupid? What, following on behind a talking giant Pyrenean mountain dog? Running on its iron legs. That's so stupid. Oh, yeah. Go, 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 go! Oh, my. I shall be in my room expecting news. I still didn't like the way he did that. Best get the whole laid for dinner. There's nobody to eat it. Not my problem. No, <gasps> Cover your face. Look. You sneezed all over the ratatouille. <laughs> I wish you would stay in the front, spy. It is my roots. I keep tripping over them. Is it much further? Without the spy in front of me, this I know nothing. Yes, quiet. Ah! Ah! Sorry. Shh. Can it be, Mako? Whatever it is, it is coming nearer. There, look. Ah! Oh. A walking wood pile with a light on the top. Grotesque. No, 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 there is somebody with it. No, there is somebody in it. Yes, it is two people. Yes, spy, do you recognize them? No, they are plastered with snow. They, they, they have seen us. Leave this to me. Good evening. Depends what you mean by good. Friendly voyagers, we are making for Prague. We trust we are well on the way. Straight ahead. We don't follow our footsteps. Did your little wood pile speak? Unless you like going round in circles. <laughs> Take no notice, he falls very easily. Indeed, it is because you push him over. Yes, I know. We too are travellers. We seek the forest fence. The one at the foot of the mountain? That's the one. You must move more to the right, where the track forks in about half a mile. Thank you. So easy to lose one's way. All too simple. All forests look the same. It's hard to tell the wood from the trees. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Nice people. Don't look now, but there's a Christmas tree following them. Do you want to be knocked flat again? It doesn't worry me much. It's the venison that's not looking too good. Come on. Half a mile to where the track falls. Keep up, keep up, will you? Nice people. Look, Tuna, mm. I think we should carry the tree. Mm. I mean, the spy. Like she was a real tree. Mm. No! My professional pride would be irredeemably wounded. I will hurry past you to the front. Don't oh. you have any other disguise? Coach and horses would be nice. Mm. Yeah, or a jacuzzi. Mm. This is no time for a new disguise. See, I am now ahead. Let us speed on! Timber. 
Look up your ears and wag your tail and bark. <laughs> and sniff out the trail. Oh, fair play, Otto. It's impressive to see him sniffing out the trail. Admit it. Impressive. Anything could follow this trail. Here. Look at the prints in the snow. Hmm? Neat size 12, regular three feet apart. And then uh, slightly to one side of them, a churned up snow drift like a demented and uncoordinated sea lion was wallowing along best as it could. Leaving little strips of venison every now and then, hmm? Ah, up, look. A poor little so-and-so went down again here, look. And here, poor little kid. Oh. Hey, look, do you really have to eat the bits of venison? It's not natural. No, no, it, it is very strange. By some weird osmosis, I begin to feel like a dog, to think like a dog. Here, get your nose out my throat. Oh, sorry. Shh. What, what is it, Spy? Best not call me Spy. Call me uh, Rover. Somebody's coming. Ridiculous. Oh, hey, two people. They're behind that fir tree. Rover! Rover, quiet! Oh, uh, heel, sir. Heel! It is two people with a dog. Can it be Slovnikas assassination unit, too? Leave this to me. I shall proffer the password. The Olda, the Iser, the Moldau, and the Eiger are tributaries of the mighty Elba. What did he say? I think I'm going mad. No, they are not you, two. I recognize them. They are guards from the palace. Leave this to me. I shall approach them. They are approaching us. Evening. Hey, Be calm. Not a pleasant night. No, brass monkeys. <laughs> Have you come far? Prague. And whither are you bound, my hearty? Who's asking? We are two visitors hoping to enjoy late Christmas festivities in the fine old city of Prague. Have you seen anybody about tonight? Indeed we have. And if you should be, let us idly suppose, security forces for the state of Bohemia on the lookout for, let us amusingly imagine, enemy agents, we have met two suspicious characters not long ago at all, heading for the forest fence, taking the right-hand fork where the track divides. <laughs> Why? That tree moved. Of course it did. There is a stiff breeze. No, 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 no. It moved about six inches forward and then stumbled over its roots a bit. Really? You're right, Zygmunt. <laughs> did it again. <laughs> this tree? Ah, uh, you, you mean this tree? Yeah, the one that's doing the valita. <laughs> and just fell over. Sorry. And apologised. That tree? It's our pet tree. Your pet tree. You have a pet dog. <laughs> and we have a pet tree. Precisely so. Mm. It was you who thought you were going mad, wasn't it? Yes. Good. Thought it might be me. Anyway, if you and your friend will walk with us to the edge of this clearing, we will point out the direction of the path which leads to where the track divides. Ah, yeah, all right. Then come... <laughs> no, three. Stay. <laughs> Not a word. Swoosh, swoosh, rustle, rustle. They are now out of earshot. I knew it. Only one person in the world could have the panache to carry off such a disguise. And only one other could enter so entirely the persona of a Pyrenean mountain dog. <laughs> See, you have watered my roots. Oh, sorry. It is a mark of your dedication and professionalism. Oh, can it be you, Malta? The Dubrovnik College of Mercenary and Allied Trade? Yes, yes. The Honor Spy Class of 917. Yes. Oh, yes. I knew it. Oh, Harry. Marta. Harry. Nobody's going to believe this. Speak. We have such little time. You remember the graduation ball? And our party. I to Bohemian security. And I to the Slavnik guerrillas. Oh, I love you. I have always loved you. Oh, no, this is madness. I know it. Oh, Marta, what lovers we were. Has there ever been anyone else? Never. And you? Never. Oh, my love. 
Oh, my love, I can feel my sap rising. Oh, my God, I'm on heat. This is madness. Oh, there it is. Take care. I cannot live without you. We must trust to fate and do our duty. You with the tyrant and I with the liberator. Such integrity. Oh. I swoon. And the craft of your disguise. You were always more adept than I. No, no. My bark is much worse than your bite. Swoosh, swoosh, rustle, rustle. We shall meet again. Don't know where, don't know when. But, but I, I know we'll meet again, again some... Oh. Heel, heel, boy. Why, <laughs> well, um, thanks again. We hope you find whom you seek. I don't suppose the little one looked like a woodpile. You know, with a little light on the top. Yeah, yeah I didn't really notice. Did you notice? N- notice? No, oh. Not really. I think it may have been so. Oh. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yes. Don't forget your tree. <laughs> tree. Come along. Tree. I'll say, hey, what's its name? <laughs> <laughs> Rotten Slavniks. Tell them a mile off. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with Rover? His nose is all dry. What's wrong, Rover? Nothing. I'm in love. You're in love? Yes. Right. Fine. Uh, off we go. Come on. Shot you on. <laughs> Take your mind off it. There's work to do. The king's in trouble. Oh, tell me something new. Yeah, but you wouldn't want anything to happen to little Mark, would you? Eh? So come on, chop chop. No, don't say that. Chop chop. No, please. All right, then. I can live without it. You, Sigmund? Ah, oh, just about. Mm-hmm. Well, so, let's get moving. It's very late, and it's getting colder. I think that I shall never see a poem lovely as a tree. Full moon, Sigmund. Oh! Oh! Oh, my God. What is that? Don't even think. Oh. Oh, look. A hovel. A hovel. Boy, I've found us a hovel. Terrific. On your feet, this is the big moment. That meat doesn't look too good. I don't look too good. You've been falling on it, haven't you? The six half bottles of wine are still in one piece, anyway. And the seven wet, heavy, hard pine logs. Now, leave everything to me. Don't open your sour little mouth or I shall fill it with a regal fist. Understood? This is a party political broadcast on behalf of me. It is what this whole dreadful business has been about. So just stand around and try to look benevolent. Hello? Good evening? Hello? Yes? Go away. We've had carol singers. No, I don't think you understand. You know the time. Push off. We are not carol singers. Who is it? Carol singers. Tell them we've had carol singers. Excuse me, we are not, repeat, not carol singers. Listen to them. I'll go to any length. You're never going to let them in, are you? Well, to ten to midnight. Clear off. Uh, now listen. You peasant. You peasant. What do you call me? Uh, kind sir, kind madam. We bear gifts. Free gifts. Why? What are you selling? Don't you understand? Gifts. Presents, peasants. We bring flesh. What do they bring? Flesh. Flesh? And wine and logs. Quite a lot of logs. I want to know what he means by flesh. Whose flesh? Uh, let us in. Let us in. I insist you let us in. Open, open, open. Is what? Sire, sire, wait for me! Left! Left! Left again! Left again! And almost immediately right! And almost immediately right! And rest! Good! Excellent! Nobody follows us! Nobody, Judah! Where is the palace, spy? We are at its very walls. There is a secret door in the south wall. I see it. And now, a new disguise. Away with fir tree, roots and all. Thank God for that. And instead... I don't believe this. Form to the palace and destiny. You heard. Follow the... Uh, um, coconuts. Yes. 
Great. Over here, boy. Where? Here, by this heap of stones and pile of old rags. Right. Happy Christmas. Who, who said that? The pile of old rags. Once a man, actually. Glad to see somebody sometime over Christmas. Don't see many people these days. Well, you know the saying? A friend in need is a bleeding nuisance. So, Merry Christmas and all the best for 931. Don't take any notice of her cry. But what's the matter? Nothing food, drink and a bit of political influence wouldn't put right. See my home behind me? No. Exactly. It was a good hovel, as hovels go. Not one of your modern high-tech hovels, all chimneys, doors and outdoor dung pile, but it was home. Did you say you want food? Yeah, boy. And drink? Why? What happened to your hovel? Evicted, wasn't I? By the agents of Wenceslas, nasty, grasping, evil old tyrant, I appealed. Did it make a monkey's bomb a difference? Did it? Look behind you. The cost of appeal. Hey, you don't look any too good yourself, son. Wandering in the forest all wet and weary this time of night. You've got that oppressed look about you. I bet you've suffered from the old swine, too. Definitely. Oh, what about your granddad? What? Never mind. I kept my axe. Made sure they didn't take that, and it's sharp. All day long I sharpen this axe in the hope that one day I'll come face to face with Wedsy's lass. Gosh, it's pretty sharp. Come here, Grandad. Look at this axe. Uh, yes, well, it's been a pleasure meeting you, old man. We must be on our way. Oh, must we, Grandad? Yes. I'd like to stay for a bit, Grandad. No, sorry, places to call out, people to see. Leave the man a pine log and let's get on our way. Here you are, one pine log. What, what the dick do I want a pine log for? To knock the tops of these two bottles of wine I'm going to give you. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Wine? I haven't tasted wine for ages, son. Don't take any notice of Grandad. He can be pretty miserable. <laughs> He'd be miserable, all right, if he'd suffered what I've suffered. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. Oh, that's marvellous. <laughs> Don't mind me, son. I'll go wild when the drink's in me. <laughs> What's your name, son? Mark. Please tell you then, Mark. <laughs> What's your name, Grandpa? Hmm? Uh, well, here... Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Tell that him, is, it is. Any name, save Wenceslas, and you are me mate for life. <laughs> Where are you going, Grandad? Come along, come along. Leave the gentleman to peace and quiet. Goodbye and happy Christmas. Oh, and you, son. <laughs> and Grandpa. <laughs> Silent night. Oh, yeah. Who's this? Sorry. Where are we? In the kitchen. This way. Right, right. Right. Sorry. It's all right. Quiet. Sorry, dear. The door. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It, it is locked. What? Locked? No, it's not. It isn't locked. Yes, it is. You're pushing. Pull it. Pull? Don't push. that lantern, Vlad. <gasps> I am Ludmilla, grandmother to the king and head of Bohemian security. You are surrounded. Oh, dear. Crone, what are you doing here? You're far too stupid to be caught up in rebellion. Oh, I thought it was charades. But these are the enemy. Oh, I've been seized by the Slavniks. What on earth did you say that for? I thought I might get a cheap laugh. 
You're wrong. Just a minute. Slavniks. You think us Slavniks? <laughs> <laughs> Who are Slavniks, anyway? <laughs> they are rebels. <laughs> 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 This is no laughing matter. And who wish to kill the good King Wenceslas? Kill him? Kill our noble, honest, fun-loving King Wenceslas? Never. Three cheers for the King. Good, good boy, 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 he's a jolly good Shut fellow. Shut up, Crone. If not Slavniks, then who? Why are you here in the King's private quarters at half past one in the morning? And why, lift the lantern, lad, why is one of you dressed like a horse? Oh, we come to entertain you. Let me entertain Shut you. Up, me and my uh, sisters. Who? Who will now, at once and immediately, twiddle the third button from the top of their coats and pull the irritating bit of string hanging from their woolly hats. What? At once. <laughs> How did she do this to our clothes? I don't want to know. More light. Oh, they are indeed women. I could have sworn they were Slavnik assassins bristling with weapons. Oh, what, these two? Yeah, oh, you don't half look a picture, you two. <laughs> yes, indeed, so we do. <laughs> with your long, stripy stockings. <laughs> yes, yes, goodness us. <laughs> that pink curly wig <laughs> makes me laugh. <laughs> Highly amusing, yes, old woman. Ha, ha. Ha. And look, look at the size of your titties. <laughs> Do you mind? And the backside of the other one. Mm. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh. But are you convinced, Lady Ludmilla? How could we three intend to harm? I am not entirely convinced, but there seems no alternative, this side of sanity. I am decided, however that it becomes more than ever essential to locate my grandson and bring him to safety at once. But do you know where he may be? He was last seen making for the forest. At the foot of the mountain. By St. Agnes Fountain. Where? Well, never mind. You shall join the search. That way we shall keep watch on you if you intend harm. And you may entertain us if not. There is a coach outside the palace gate. And I shall pull it. I have got to admire her, Gumon. I do. At least we have not been discovered and are about to pursue the tyrant. Are your weapons concealed? They are. I know not how. I can feel the red thing spikes sticking in my bustle. Follow them to the coach and destiny. Slavnik's rule. Okay. I don't think you understand. Try me. I am good King Wenceslas. What are you good at? I'm not good at anything in particular. My intentions are good. I see. You don't mean good. You mean nice. You are nice, King Wenceslas. No, you're nice too. I am eager and willing and trying very hard to be nice to absolutely anybody who will accept gratis and for free ten pounds of venison. Not anymore. Not ten. About nine pounds. Maybe. Some shrubs off on the way. Quite a lot, actually. Chaka Songu, of course, but I wouldn't believe it particularly nice to want to poison people's metabolism with protein and fat of the fleshy kind. Not personally, not particularly nice to the animal involved, either. Don't tell me you're all vegetarians. Uh, that's right. Wine, then, for the festive season. We have four half bottles. Three, sorry, I dropped one. Three half bottles of Bohemian Red. A bit shaken up and over chilled. Ow! Yeah, I wish you wouldn't uh, keep doing that. Aggression is weakness, you know. You're going to tell me you don't drink? Drink? Oh, yes, we drink all right. Wonderful. Then here so we are. So long as it's bring water or fruit juice. Not alcohol. Oh, no, thank you, nice keen winchlessness. We don't partake of that poison either. You breathe, I suppose? You sweat, belch, and occasionally burn wood? All those, yes. You burn logs? Yes. Pine logs? So long as they're organically grown, yes. For the love of God. Don't believe in God. You can't have organically grown trees, you fool. Yes, we can. What do you think they print The Guardian from? Uh, the what? Dear me, have I done it again? You see, existential and meditational teetotal vegetarianism offers sudden glimpses of the future, like I've just had. And, oh, look, that's wonderful. Your young colleague is laughing. Not for long, he's not. <laughs> I told you, don't do that. It's not called for and it's not nice. 
Not nice, King Wenceslas. He's horrible, if you ask me. Your young man is right. He's downright nasty. Nasty King Wenceslas. Yes, go away, nasty King Wenceslas. We were enjoying a meaningful bit of interrap before you arrived and ruined our vibrations. Come. I don't want to. I'm tired. Come. Come where? We're lost. Follow me. Fine. Good night. Good morning. Give me a bottle of wine. Open your mouth. Thanks. Don't dare drink. Get your teeth into this cork. Hang on while I twist. Oh, that hurt. Go ahead while I down this wine. I'm beginning to lose heart and interest in the whole ridiculous idea. Go on, I'll catch you up. Don't fancy a log or two while you're at it. I've still got six. Ow! Never touched you. I know. I've just fallen over something. You've been falling over something ever since we set out. A sign. It's a sign. Oh, that's all I need. Christmas clairvoyance. A wooden sign on a post. Hmm? Hang on. I can hardly read it. The lantern on my head's not very bright. To the hermit's cave. Is it? Can it be real? Mm. I fell over it, didn't I? That's another chunk of venison broken off by the way. A cave would be dry. And warm. And findable. We could be about to know where we actually are. This way. Don't move too far ahead. Your lantern's almost out. I know. It's been keeping my head warm, you know. The hot wax dripping into my hair. All good things come to an end. Wait for me. No carol singers. We are not. That's what they all say. And before you can get your door shut, they're all over your hovel, dancing and singing. And being jolly. Go away! We're looking for somebody. There's nobody here. We're out. Bloody Nora. Who did you say you were after? Oh, uh, we're looking for... Uh... Not you. The other one. What, me? What did you say? I don't be silly now. Well, just now. What? Oh, bloody Nora. I knew it! I don't know who you are, but you'd better go away quickly. Let me get me rags on, you faithless hussy. Don't call me hussy. That's your fancy man out there. No, I'm not. not. Fancy men out there, then. <laughs> Down there, dog. Where's the harpoon? No, no, don't do it. Uh, who's, who's that inside, then, missus? I'm Nora the rabbit gutter. Because... Don't tell me. <laughs> bloody, bloody Nora. I'm going to sort them out, and I'll be back to deal with you. Yeah, come on, Rover, walkies. Runnies. <laughs> There's an old millerage by the Stravich. Belly did of it. I've had enough well, of this. I so really have. Who needs it? He can stick his probation. Did you know... The cathedral in the centre of Prague is dedicated to St. Vitus, boy? Yes. There could have been a good scene about that, couldn't the boy? Yes. But no need <laughs> to make a song and dance over it, eh, Sire, boy? Sire, <laughs> the night grows darker now. Well, of course it does. The lantern on your head's gone out. And the wind grows stronger. We'll soon be at the cave. Fails my heart. How do you mean? I know not how. What are you talking about? I can go no longer. Honestly, I feel sick. Mark. What now? My footsteps, good my page. What about them? Tread thou in them boldly, and thou shalt feel the winter's rage freeze thy blood less coldly. Have you lost your marbles? Hmm? Tread in your footprints. You're not carrying anything. You haven't carried anything all night. Your footsteps are a yard apart. And look... Snow's barely dented. You say dented, I say dented. Listen, I'm loaded down with wood, wine and mucky flesh. And I'm up to my armpits every struggling step I try. You are the most dreadful moaner. You can try, it'll give you something else to think about. Page my footsteps, good my mark. You old sod, you very sod. Naughty. How much of that castle plonk have you had? If you only try. I bet my footsteps are red hot. I feel quite warm. I don't know what you're complaining about. I've got quite a glow. And I found the cave. By staggering head on into the mountain? It's highly painful. That should sober you up. Hello? Shouldn't we knock or something? You can't knock on a cave. 
Hello, 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 hello. It's an echo. Great. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. hello. Ah, good evening. How do you do? Hello, hello, hello. Ow. 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 Are you the hermit? I am. I am good King Wenceslas. What exactly are you good? I phrase that. I am generally well-intentioned, King Wenceslas. I didn't say anything. And this greasy little sodden streak of glowering wax and misery is my page Mark. He's very young to be out after midnight. How long after midnight? Three and a quarter hours after midnight. Oh, God. Oh, God. Amen. What? I am Kermit. The hermit? Yes, Kermit the hermit. Ridiculous. Why? Shut up. His parents didn't know he was going to be a hermit when he was born. <laughs> All right. I mean, they didn't gaze at each other with a wild surmise and say, Oh, look, darling, it's a hermit. I said, All right. I wonder Ow. if it's quite kind to strike the boy. He's my page. I can do what I like. I don't need a permit, hermit. Kermit. A permit, Kermit? The hermit. Stop it. Anyway, I have power, authority, or whatever you... Term it. Yes, whatever you term it, Kermit. The hermit. <laughs> Observe, I did not strike him. Indeed. Good. Now, I don't suppose you'd like some sodden logs and a few greasy shreds of venison, would you? With some cheap, chilled, highly agitated plop? It is my duty to receive with gratitude whatever arms or donations are offered me. Amazing. Boy... Unload. I don't believe it. Now, I do hope that you let as many people as possible know that upon the Feast of Stephen, or rather the day after, I, generally well intentioned King Wenceslas, came forth all the way from Prague to visit you in your cave and present you with uh, all that. And so, may we wish you Happy Christmas, Hermit Kermit. Happy Christmas. And you will remember to tell all the people you see about this wonderfully warm and spontaneous gesture, won't you? Won't you? Well, the problem, you see, is that hermits are, by the very nature of things, rather solitary beings. And I, I do rather pride myself on my professionalism. It's my intention, actually, to see as few as possible and talk to even less. But you've got a damn great sign up outside, man. True, but it is only placed there in particularly bad weather to guide weary and forlorn travellers to a place of comparative safety. It is not there for advertisement. How many? I'm sorry, my son? Last year, how many people did you see? Actually see. Actually see. Not here from a distance. How many did you see and speak with? Two. Two. One was a deaf mute. Low down. You've got to be joking. There is only one purpose behind this tattered fiasco, and that is to provide me with publicity. That is why we are stuck in a cave in the middle of nowhere at a quarter past three in the morning. I am not here for religious or paleontological interest. I am here for publicity, and publicity doesn't happen between three people, one of whom is a hermit and another a deaf mute. What was the third? Don't even think about it. Load. I'm terribly sorry. Shut up. So you should be. Page? No. I beg your pardon. I won't load up. Pick up that food and those logs. Shan't. See this hand? See these teeth? Oh dear. You wouldn't dare. Yeah. Ow! That hurt! See this foot? Oh, oh, you treasonous little... And see this handful of smelly, squashed, gooey, greasy venison? Oh, no, no, myself in the name of God! No, please, surely... Anywhere I can hide for a bit, calm it. To destiny. Is everybody happy? Yes. yes. Can't hear you. Yes. yes. All those on this side of the coast. Oh, yes. yes. Us us now all those on the other. Flipping <laughs> Sorry. What you do that for? Oh, you'll have to forgive me, even the old accent, yeah. I was having the usual nightmare. Thought you might be. Wins his last. You've seen him? Shan't to be a fine thing. Have you seen anybody tonight? What, well, did stop and pass the time of day with a soiled old pile of rags by the ruins of his hovel? Yes. Leave this to me. Now, my good man. Mm. Yes, my canine interlocutor. Yeah, how'd you train him to do that? Ministry of Spies. What? 
Min spies. Min spies. Oh, did I know? Say no to what? I may be losing the remnants of my brain cells on account of eviction, demolition, destitution, starvation and general housing, father. But I thought the Pyrenean mountain dog was offering me a mince pie. Oh, look, ragbag. Which way did they go? What's in it for me if I tell you? A belt up the bracket if you don't. Fair enough. Old man and his grandson, out or so back, staggered off towards the hermit's cave. I could hear them shouting at each other quite a while. What were they saying? Um... Sire, the night grows darker now, and the wind grows stronger. Fails my heart, I know not how. I can go no longer. Foot my page steps, good my mark. Tread thou in them boldly. Thou shalt find the winter's rage. Freeze thy bloodless, dull old lady. Yeah, that's what it said. Foot my page steps, good my mark. Yeah, something like that. Bloody Nora. Oh, you don't want to get mixed up with her, mate. You seen the size of her husband's harpoon? Uh, the um, hermit's cave. Uh, seek, boy. How did they manage to train him to do all that, then? I don't know where we are. On the trail of the king, Crone. Where's Prague, then? Behind you. Where? Behind, Behind you. you. Oh, uh, stop the coach. Oh! Oh! Then he wrote himself a prescription. Vlad, inquire of this hovel dweller the whereabouts of my grandson. Very good, lady. <coughs> uh, remarkable, by the way. Thank you. Never thought of entering the Bohemia Grand National? No. I was trained only on the flat. Oh, well. <laughs> Excuse me. Why have we stopped? There is some sort of place. Mm. The tyrant's movements are being checked. Your bustle shifted, by the way. If I had wrinkles in my bright pink tights like some people I could name, I wouldn't go around criticizing others. All right, all right. Keep your blue rinse on. Yeah. The spy is wonderfully horsey, Tuna. There is no stopping you. Once... Once he has the beat between her teeth. <laughs> you are becoming more and more bohemian, Tuna. Sorry, come on. Slavnik's rule. Okay. Come uh, on, Vlad. Uh, Give us your hand. Uh, thank you. Now, what did he say? Straight ahead, there is a cave. Onwards. No, listen, everyone. Don't turn off the anachronism. There's been a happening. Uh, there was somebody in a horse's skin pulling a royal coach with a queenly personage and two men dressed as caricature women and a comic old dame and a miserable-looking straight man. Either the trappers have been at the Slimovitz again or someone's invented pantomime. Cool. Yeah, man. Ah, ah, you all right, Monk? Yes, thanks, Kermit. Uh, Your Majesty? When do we reach? Uh, oh, not long. I can walk if you like. No, you sit up there on my shoulders. Out of harm's way. Ow! Silly place to leave a branch. Mm. Serve you right. I've teeth marks to prove treason, you know. I've got bruises on my shins. Look! Life! Silence! Reckon it's them. I'll bound up and take a sniff. <laughs> Hope it's them. I'm ready for palace and kip. Yeah, it's them. Good. That's not the poor man with them, is it? No, that's the hermit. Go on. It is. Kermit. Kermit the hermit? Yeah. It... Oh, no, I expect they've done all that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> what a very large dog. I don't like dogs. <laughs> Get off. Your Majesty, it is I, Harry the Spy, in one of my famed disguises. Gosh. Pretty cute, eh? Fantastic. Uh, anyway, sire, are you safe? Safe, possibly. Dry, warm, happy, well-fed, cheerful? No. Yes, Otto. I up, young Mark. I up, Your Majesty. I up, Sentry. Your Majesty, Mark, uh, Kermit. We've been lost. Nonsense. Uh, this is a happy meeting, then. It is nothing of the sort. Careful now. Still now. Don't move. What is it? Nova, leave this to me. <laughs> I, Marta the spy, will make contact. Sit still. Say nothing. 
This is most alarming. Do not worry. It is four in the morning. We are in a dangerous and dense forest. Apparently our horse is in earnest negotiation with their dog. The king of Bohemia is missing, and a large man with a funny accent and frock is telling me I don't have to worry. Frock is telling me I don't have to worry. Oh, nay, nay. Why not? Again, again? <laughs> no, I mean again, we need... Go oh, away with disguise. I was about to contract a stemper. Away with disguise. My hoofs were killing me anyway. My darling. My love. Oh, if you could uh, possibly remove your bridle. I'm sorry. Oh, my love. My darling, what are we to do? My Slavniks are close to your king and are pledged to kill him. I, uh, I am of their number. See how his guards protect the king. You Slavniks are outnumbered and I must fight. Against me. Against you. Oh, tragic. Oh, more than tragic. Silly? No, less than silly. Peculiar? No, slightly to the side of peculiar. Damn tricky, Holmes. That's the one. Friends of each faction, gather to me here. My hermetical insight reveals potential disaster. I beg you, come, listen to me. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Dear friends, dear friends... On one hand, in the red corner of life, as we might say, we have Slavniks. Uh, Yes, Slavniks who wish to assassinate the generally well-intentioned King Wenceslas. On the other, in, let us say, the blue corner, loyal Bohemians who must defend him. There must be a better way. This, after all, is the season of peace and goodwill among men, of hope, of a belief in the ultimate rightness of things and the goodness of humankind. The man's a fool. Where are the spies? Uh, I don't know. No, look, Otto. There they are, down behind that bit of bush, clinging together for courage. Or something. I think they're fighting, aren't they? Just keep your eyes on the king. There's a good boy. No, they're mating. Sorry. Then throw a bucket of water over them or something. Now, everybody, listen. It's quite clear there are nine of us and three of them, so let's get stuck in and knock hell out of them. Any questions? I'm afraid it would be unprofessional of me to allow myself to be counted in the majority. I should have to join the underdogs. No problem. Eight, four. Now, if everyone will just find a weapon... Uh, your and Majesty get... will remember the appropriate clause of neutrality in the Bohemian Civil Service Conditions of Service. <sighs> Seven four does not dismay me. So into the breach once more. I and don't think. Precisely, Crone. You don't think. Therefore, stay as you are. If you intend to continue in my employ, seven four. If I do assume a monstrous monarch, you intend personally to lead your pitiful forces. Uh... In which case, I shall make it my responsibility to sever well, your. Uh, con- however, I think it only right that I, as the point of contention in this dispute, should follow the example of the civil service and six and... four. I don't think it's fair, and I've really had a rotten time, and I've been bullied, and I'm tired, and I'm not going to be on any side he's on. Five or... Nonsense. The boy is far too young to fight, and the crone is far too old. Most of us have no intention of fighting. I'm not at all dressed for it. Very well. Then let the professionals fight it out, and we'll watch. We have two guards and a spy... Spy? Forget the spy. Don't much fancy it, sir. Oh, it's not like we're on overture. Officially, we came off duty at midnight. Ah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it does seem to me that the account of these events, which are published for the present and future, are more important than the truth of the matter. Let us then devise some account that almost comes close to a near proximity of the truth and saves face all round. Such as? The king and page set out to deliver provisions to the poor and battled onward through a blizzard. But please, lady, that doesn't say that I had to carry everything. Or that the king and the page were hopelessly lost until saved by a hermit. Or that that little monster bit and kicked me. And filled your face with rancid venison. Or that there's a woman called Bloody Nora with a harpoon happy husband. Or that these swarvniks raided the purest. It seems to tell very little of the truth, lady. Precisely. It is a political statement. We shall leave it to the intelligence of future generations. Here, now... Slightly, but only slightly, before dawn, we shall decide upon a carefully coded narrative which will satisfy all parties. Now, what happened when you were caught in the blizzard, boy? I felt sick. 
He told me to tread in his footsteps and I'd be better again. And since you are here present, it must have been so. Oh, but they never delivered any of the flesh or the wine. We did a bit. And a log or two. We shall ignore the failure to deliver in the communique. After my grandson's ludicrous attempts to cure his page's incipient hypothermia in the forest, we shall simply conclude with a vague and unremarkable precept. Sort of thought for today. Exactly. But what of we Slavniks? You did not succeed. The king lives. But you did not totally fail. You have located him in the midst of his guards. The agreed story will mention neither success nor failure. We shall wish you good morning and suggest you try some other time. Yeah, preferably not Christmas. Uh, perhaps a, a, a vaguely religious idea to conclude. Something about how good it is to give to the poor. Unless you're just as poor or poorer. How? About uh, so long as you're rich, it does no harm to give to the poor. Yes, Lady Ludmilla, why not? So, the official version will say merely that they set out, ran into bad weather, which caused weakness in the child which the man attempted to alleviate, and if you're rich, you won't notice it so much if you give something to the poor. A masterly communique. Might I just query if it is sufficiently vacuous and illogical to suggest to future readers that there must be something wrong somewhere? Slavniks? Come on. Tuna, so be it. I think it's a lovely story. It is a travesty, which makes me look an idiot. Any other business? Will you listen to me? I may remind you who is king around here. Only the most sentimental half-wit would believe it. I believe it. I rest my case. So, I categorically refuse to allow this count to, to travel to ages yet unknown. I may also remind you that the pro-Wenceslas vote is five. The anti-Wenceslad vote I didn't is... No, he'd got an auntie, blood. Quiet! Thank you. As I was saying, the anti-Wenceslas vote is also five. What is that noise? I can hear that dirty voice of Wenceslas. Oh. And if I can get him in range of this axe. Oh, well, oh, yes, I will. That's a worry, Squire. I think the balance of power is about to shift. Four or five. Where are you, Wenceslas? The fire in the forest. I can hear the bosses and I'm coming to get you. I suppose it's not a bad communique. Where are you? Could be worse. Yes, yes, I agree. God help us, definitely. Where do I sign? Good. Where are you, then? It's your friend with the harpoon and that bloody Nora. Yeah, exactly. Where are you? I'm here. Got the harpoon. Got the harpoon. Dear friends, since we seem to have reached some sort of decision, and I stand moreover in great peril of using up my entire verbal quota for the year to come, I deem my cave call. And bid you farewell. Goodbye, Good Good So, farewell it is to you, hateful tyrant. We shall meet again. And next time. Exactly. Uh -huh. Come, go on. Slavnik's rule. Okay. I don't like this one bit. Spy. Spy. Mm -hmm. Which spy? Oh, my God. Darling. Oh, my lord. Oh, I give up. Grandmama, do something. Spies, do, do you recall page 497 of the Secret Dubrovnik Manual, third edition, cloth found? The Camp Horsky Mindful? Uh, whereby a pair of spies can, through sheer strength of two minds fused together, convince a third party that they are walking into cast iron gates which afterwards fall on them. No, that's page 496, but it'll do. Look, hurry! Oh, this requires oh, a degree of closeness. A fusion of mind and body. Particularly body. Oh, I do Mark. Do I have to? Yes. My love, our finest hour. The Karpovsky mind block special or fuse, fuse, my darling. I am. Oh, I am fusing. Believe me, I am fusing. Oh, oh. oh, oh. Thank God this is radio. Here you are, so keep your eyes shut. Sorry. Not you, the lad. I think I'm going to be sick. You must be quiet. We have to concentrate. Oh. Well, Mark, hey up. Hey, Axelman. 
Oh, about a game of I Spy. Good idea, Sigmund. I'll begin I Spy with my little eye. No, let Mark begin, eh? Huh? I Spy with my little eye. Yeah, no, no, I, I don't think I want to play I Spy after all. There's a bohemian guard who walked up and down in the yard. Um, how does that go on, Sigmund? Oh, don't ask me, I don't know. Ends up with feathered and tarred. Look, you don't have to do this, you know. I know all about the birds in the Gooseberry Bush Fair. You've been listening to the crone again, haven't you? <laughs> What was it like for you? The earth moved. It's beginning to get light. Good. Come, everybody, back to the palace. A spy, come. Uh, you must be joking. Oh, yes. Well, in that case, take three days' compassionate leave. Oh, my sweet. Oh, bliss unbounded. I am going to be sick. Up on my back, young Mark. I'm sleepy. Well, let's get moving, then. Vlad, you'd better leave. I can lead. <coughs> Vlad. This way. Bye, spies. Bye, Mark. Uh, bye, bye, my bohemish boy. So, what is the story? You've been told, Crone. I've forgotten, too. Listen to me. I shall relate this once only. This is the version that history will receive. Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen. When the snow lay round about, deep and crisp and even, brightly shone the moon that night over frosts. When a poor man came in sight, the great winds of you. In Crisp and Even, Brightly, by Alec Rowe, Good King Wenceslas was played by Timothy West, Mark, his page, by James Holland, and Ludmilla, the Queen Grandmother, by June Barry. His sentries, Otto and Siegmund, were William Edel and Christian Rodsker. Harry, the spy, was Michael Tudor Barnes, Vlad, his major domo, David March, and his cook, the crone, June Tobin. Marta, the Slavnik spy, was Maureen O'Brien, and Tuna and Gomon, the Slavnik assassins, were Bill Wallace and John Badley. The hovel dwellers were Andrew Hilton and Polly James, the ragman, Anthony Jackson, the nice man, Paul Nicholson, and Kermit the hermit, Michael Deacon. The music was played by Andrew Christie. Crisp and Even, Brightly, was directed in Bristol by Sean McLaughlin. Who now shall bless the poor, shall yourselves have blessing. Got it? No one will believe that in a thousand years. <laughs>